What's up everybody? My name is Scott Paddock and today we're going to talk about how to play with feeling. When a new student walks into my studio, the very first thing I ask them to do is play a melody that they're very comfortable with. Oftentimes when they play that melody, it sounds a bit like a robot. So something like this. Now technically those are all of the right notes and the right rhythms for Let It Be by the Beatles, but it does not sound like that song at all because there is no feeling, there is no emotion to it. Music is not about notes and rhythms. The notes and rhythms are the given. It is up to you to interpret those notes and rhythms and make them come to life. Express yourself when you're playing that melody, bring out some feeling in your melodies. Okay, so here is the thing. Just telling someone to play with more feeling or more oomph or more gusto or more energy does not usually translate into them understanding how to do that. So believe it or not, if you just add a couple things to your melodies, it's very easy to make them have a lot more feeling. And once you understand how to play uh, melodies like this, it's going to become a natural part of the way you play because it's going to sound so good and so much more natural as opposed to robotic melodies. Nobody wants to hear a robot play a melody. So the first and easiest way to express yourself emotionally when you are playing a melody is through the use of dynamics. If you don't use dynamics, that it is never going to sound good and you are 100% of the time going to sound like a robot. No one wants to hear you play sounding like a marching band. So when it comes to adding in dynamics, there are a couple rules that make it really easy. And the first is, if we take a look at this, uh, the beginning of this melody for Let It Be, you can see that we have four Gs. So if I play all four of those Gs, the same dynamic level, it's just gonna sit there. It's not gonna go anywhere. It's not gonna sound good. But if I start softer and gradually get louder, I'm gonna tell more of a story and I'm gonna push that melody forward. That has a lot more feeling. I'm telling more of a story. So when you have repeated notes, push them forward. When your notes go up, like if the line goes up, in other words, your notes are ascending, you're generally gonna get a little bit louder. And when they go down, you're gonna get a little bit softer. And when you have a long note, you wanna do something with that long note. When you do those couple things with your dynamics, everything you play is automatically gonna have a lot more feeling and you're gonna be telling a lot more of a story. Take a listen to the first part of this melody where I just bring out some dynamics. Did you hear how I pushed that phrase forward during the repeated notes? Then I ascended and got louder and descended and got softer. And suddenly I'm telling a story with the notes and rhythms. The next thing you want to do to bring emotion to a melody is use your articulations. If you play all of the notes with the same articulation, either slurred or tongued, it's just not going to sound good. Even though I'm trying to use dynamics when I tongue all the notes, it does not sound good. So you want to use your artic articulations to express the melody that you're playing. So you're going to slur some notes, you're going to tongue some notes, you're going to lean into some notes, you're going to use a variety of articulations so that you're telling more of a story with your melody. That time I just used mostly tongues and slurs and every now and then I accented a note. So just by using those three types of articulations, I was telling a story and playing with a lot of feeling. 
And that leads perfectly into the next step, which is find the most important notes in the melody and bring them out. So I call those goal notes, G-O-A-L, goal notes. Those are your most important notes. So you wanna lean into them and make them sound a little bit stronger. Now, in the beginning, it might be difficult for you to figure out which notes are the goal notes, but a really good rule of thumb is the longer notes oftentimes are gonna be the goal notes. So if you look in the first full measure, you can see I have that A on the end of two. That's a longer note, that's probably gonna be a goal note. And the second full measure, I had that D on the end of three. That's a longer note. That's gonna be a goal note. And the E in measure three on beat two, that's a longer note. That's gonna be a goal note. So take a listen to what it sounds like when I bring out those goal notes. It really adds a lot of direction. There's a lot more feeling. There's a lot more emotion. I am telling a story. Playing melodies is all about telling a story. It is not about notes and rhythms. The notes and rhythms are the given. You need to express yourself with those notes and rhythms and tell a story. Now, the last C that I played in measure four, that's a long note, but it's not a goal note because that phrase is ending. So it wouldn't make any sense for me to play that stronger. Now, the more you work on recognizing goal notes, the easier it's gonna to be to figure them out. Now, there is another tried and true way to find goal notes, and that is to look at the lyrics to a song. So if a song has lyrics, check out the lyrics and you're gonna see the most important words. You're gonna to wanna to bring out those words. So if the lyrics have a the or an an or an and or an uh, those would not be goal notes. You're gonna bring out the subjects and verbs, the words that are very important to your lyrics. So knowing the lyrics is very important. And you can also always listen to another version of someone playing that song and listen to what notes they're bringing out. Every pro musician that you've ever heard in your life brings out goal notes or the most important notes in a melody. If you'd like to get really good at interpreting melodies and expressing yourself on the saxophone, then I'd like to invite you to come check me out at the Scott Paddock Sax School. That is one of my favorite things to teach and I teach it throughout my sax school. So whenever you are learning a new melody or a new technique or a new improv thing, I'm constantly talking about how you can express yourself or play with emotion when you are playing that melody or that solo. So throughout the entire school, I'm constantly talking about expressing yourself and finding your own musical voice. So if that sounds like something that you would like to learn how to do and incorporate into your sax playing, then stop by the sax school. I'll put a link in the video description. Now this next step is a little bit more difficult, but it's gonna make a lot of sense when I explain it to you. When you are playing a melody, you don't wanna play it perfectly in time. You want your time to float a little bit. Now that doesn't mean just play random wherever you want, but you might be a little bit behind the beat. You might anticipate some stuff. You're gonna be floating a little bit over top of that time. You're not necessarily gonna be 100% playing every single thing on the beat or on the end of the beat. So I'm gonna play the beginning of this and I'm gonna lock everything super duper into time and you'll hear how it loses a lot of its flow. I was bringing out all the right stuff, but my time was really rigid. I kind of had a hard time playing it like that because I never play melodies like that. I always interpret them. So you wanna make sure that you're playing your melody so that it's floating over top and it just feels really natural. Now that gets into the world of ad-libbing. Ad-libbing is when you add notes to a melody or you change the rhythm or you repeat some notes. That's a little bit more advanced than what I wanna talk about in this lesson. In this lesson, I just wanna help you develop the skill of playing your melodies with feeling. The last thing that you can do to really spice up your melody and give it a lot more emotion without adding a ton of stuff to it is add in some embellishments. Embellishments are grace notes, turns, falls, scoops, things like that. 
Now you want to use something that is appropriate for the melody that you're playing. For example, Let It Be is kind of laid back and mellow, so I'm not going to like growl and let it be. Um, but I will do some grace notes and some turns and that kind of stuff just to let the melody flow a little bit more and give it more emotion. So what I did is I did a grace note on the A. So just put a grace note on that. Then I did a fall from the A to the E. Then on this E, the long note, the half note, I did a little half turn. So I just did E, F, E. So I'm just playing E, F, E to give it a little bit of motion. So adding in these embellishments is really going to take your melody over the top and make it have a lot more feeling, a lot more emotion, and it's going to give it forward direction. So if when you play a melody, you don't feel like you are expressing yourself and it is just sitting there and not moving forward at all, then use some or all of the techniques I showed you in this tutorial, and it is going to completely transform the way you play a melody. Now, in the beginning, you're going to have to think a lot about your dynamics and your articulations and your goal notes and all that kind of stuff. But once you start playing melodies this way, it's going to become a natural part of your playing where you barely even have to think about it. That's just going to be the way that you hear and play melodies. So that's the goal is to always express yourself when you are playing the saxophone. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. If you'd like to dive deeper into my saxophone world, come check me out at the Scott Paddock Sax School.